Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. Uh, at the conclusion of the last episode, we had left the Karayan 2 blasting its way back home after rescuing Shellcal from orbit about the moon. And I'm just setting up my uh, arrow breaking maneuver there, about 0.1 G. I think that should be pretty good. You can see here we're still pretty close to the moon. We had just exited the moon's sphere of influence. It's going to take us a little less than a day to get down to Kerbin, but uh, we got nothing else happening in the meantime, so why don't we follow the Karayan 2 on its way down to its arrow breaking maneuver, and while we're doing that, I'll talk about what's coming up in this particular episode. So we're going to get the Karayan 2 back to Kerbin Station, and that'll get Shellcal back to the station, as well as Chrisnik, who was rescued by Bill last episode, who was awaiting to be taken down to the surface, and taking them down to the surface will uh, finish off those two contracts also have a new lab module on its way to Kerbin Station, so we'll be launching that. I'm rather excited about that. And uh, what you might have been noticing actually over the last couple of episodes is my bit of fixation on finishing off some contracts. And really, what I'm doing is I'm raising funds because I am really, really close to the two and a half million curb bucks that's required for upgrading the research and development center up to level three and uh so sort of kind of the main theme i would suppose if there is a theme for this particular episode is going to be getting that cash up to that value and getting the upgrading of that research and development center on the way uh that's going to be a big milestone that i think is, it is no, there's no think about it it is the single biggest expense uh in career mode in Kerbal Space Program is upgrading that research and development center and it it's going to feel very good to get that thing going and off the road to feel like getting over the hump so to speak and uh, I don't have to think that much about cash and contracts and all that kind of stuff but anyway we are just about there let's uh let's watch this arrow breaking pass of course it was last episode that you were introduced to my nuclear powered Karayan 2 and it's inaugural mission to go pick up Shell Cal. Seems like uh, I'm back to these sort of, I don't like Shell Cal and Chris Nick. They're these sort of word salad type of names that always sort of bother me a little bit. But I guess I got what I got. I don't know. The female names seem to be much, much better. Okay, we're starting to get some heating effects now. Nothing too scary just yet. We're still a good 45 seconds or so away from periapsis. Let's put the G-forces on so that we can keep track of that. That's on the surface data there. See how many Gs we pull. And Oh, I'm starting to get some temperature gauges there on the... Whoa! Wow. Uh, those were the deployable solar panels. And they blew up pretty... Uh, <laughs> that didn't seem to take too long at all for that to happen. Now, those long-time viewers might realize that uh, this is actually not the first time this has happened to me. Back in episode 39, the original Karayan was returning from its... The first, not its first, but the first orbit about the moon and suffered much the same sort of fate, though it was going a lot faster when it happened. That said, in the Karayan 1, it, uh, the... The solar panels were kind of recessed. There was this narrower area of the ship, and they were tucked in there. Maybe that protected them a little bit. At the time that happened, I, I completely blamed KSP's old heating model on that. I, I thought, oh, this is just ridiculous that the solar panels would explode. Uh, but <laughs> the heating model seems to be working fine now in 1.05, so maybe that's not the problem. Maybe these solar panels just really are completely inappropriate uh, for what I'm doing with it. And I do have uh, better deployable panels that, that tuck away in nice little boxes and all that kind of stuff that certainly could survive this sort of arrow breaking maneuver. However, that doesn't really help me now, does it? Because uh, I need to somehow now massage this uh, electrically neutered spacecraft back to the Karayan station. But uh, one step at a time, the first thing is to get this thing past this particular arrow breaking maneuver. Okay, so we are almost past 
periapsis. And once we are past periapsis, we are on our way up, and things can only get better. So there we go, just a couple more seconds. Second, and there we are. We are past periapsis. We are now going up, which means uh, the heating effects will be less, and uh, things should be fine. And in fact, this thing survived. Um, everything else survived perfectly fine. It, it weathered everything perfectly fine. Just the solar panels. That was the only thing that had any issues. Everything else, uh, not even close to having a problem, though. My apoapsis is much, much higher than where I expected it to be. Um, trajectories was predicting it to be not really that much higher than uh, geostationary orbit. But as you can see here, it is actually didn't seem to have come down that much at all. It still reaches most of the way out to the moon. And uh, I am rather puzzled about that, but I, I'm going to have to put that on hold because uh, i got a lab module to get up to my space station. Okay, so here we have our lab module. Uh, the contract for this has already been fulfilled, so I'm just going to get engineer going here. Wait, wait what, 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 what's going on? Oh. What the heck happened there? Well, thank goodness I send these things up uncrewed. And I did simulate this. This thing flew with flying colors in simulation mode. Oh, an investigation is going to have to be had here. <laughs> Somebody screwed up big time. Heads are going to roll, no doubt. Indeed. Upon review of video surveillance footage from the vehicle assembly building, uh, yes, the KSC is that kind of workplace. It was discovered that there were some glitchy strut issues during the test launch that didn't seem that seemed rather inconsequential. It flew just fine, but the designer, whom shall remain nameless, decided to move around the struts for purely aesthetic reasons and didn't test fly the restrutted vehicle. And well, we saw. The result of that. In the meantime, we are back with the Corian 2 out here at Apoapsis, ready to get ready, getting ready to set up our second arrow breaking pass. And something you might be noticing is we are generating electricity. Yes, isn't that mysterious? We are generating electricity with absolutely no solar power. And the only thing I can figure where this electricity is coming from is coming from the nuclear reactor that's built into those Nerva nuclear engines. Now that makes, in some ways, perfect sense. But if I went back to the vehicle assembly building and I looked and there's nothing in there talking about the fact that those Nervas will generate electricity, other than saying that it has an alternator and the alternator will generate electricity, but that's not that different than most of the engines. And I figured it only generates electricity when the engine's on, but actually it generates electricity all the time. <laughs> so saved. I didn't need those solar panels at all. And in fact, each of those Nervas generate 10 units of electrical charge per second. And since I have two of them, that's 20 units of electrical charge per second. That beats out uh, a single Gigantor as far as electrical solar generation goes, electrical power generation goes. So uh, that is more than this thing requires. So there we go. If you have nuclear engines, no need for solar panels if you're not doing anything that's too electrically taxing. Anyway, we're back out here at Apoapsis uh, using trajectories once again to try and plan this arrow breaking maneuver. And uh, I decided to be a little bit more aggressive trying to get my, my resulting orbit down even further. So I set my max G forces at about 0.15 of a G. Still doesn't seem to be bringing that orbit down that much. I'm, I'm kind of curious about that. But check this out. Just as I'm ready to take the plunge, uh, my, I check trajectories once again. And this time now it's saying that my predicted G-forces are going to be 0 0.03 Gs, which actually turn out to be pretty much what it is. And again, uh, I just started getting frustrated. And this time I actually said, oh, I gotta get my apoapsis down, so I actually started burning while I was doing my aerobraking just to get my apoapsis down, and I was 
really, really puzzled by this, why I wasn't getting any more braking than what uh, was being predicted out there at Apple Apps since I was getting so little braking action. Now, some of you might be figuring this out. And I did eventually figure this out, and I'll let you know when I did figure this out. But if you're figuring this out before me, well, congratulations. <laughs> but me, it's going to take a little while longer. So here I am doing my third pass. I still haven't figured it out. On now to the fourth pass. Yeah, still clueless about this particular problem, but I did figure out something else. Yes, this is an episode of Discovery. Quite a lot of episodes ago in my Kerpalo days, when I was first doing these arrow braking maneuvers, I played a lot of, with body lift. I was interested in whether the orientation of the vessel going through the airstream could affect my trajectory, whether I can change things like uh, apoapsis or inclination just on the way I'm going through the airstream and whether I can get lift off of just the regular body parts like fuel tanks and stuff and I came to the conclusion that no the KSP stock aerodynamic model was too primitive to model body lift and I think back then it was true it's not true anymore now in 1.05 look at that I am changing my inclination just by orienting the craft so that I get some lift off of the body of the craft and there are no lifting surfaces on this particular vessel so this is working I'm bringing down my inclination relative to the station so this is excellent and I do want to thank uh, the online discussion that happened actually this was after my asteroid capture video in particular Val Draken who uh, who talked convinced me that body lift does exist in 1.05 and in fact uh, I'll post a link to a video that he made uh, in the description uh, that is pretty convincing that body lift does work in uh, in 1.05. And my education in the comments section continued in the last episode, and it was Grungar von Draken who first pointed out to me that the HDR leak module that is on this particular vessel is actually now a lab module. Uh, you might recall from last episode that I was rather puzzled that a contract to upgrade the, to add a lab module to my space station was fulfilled by this particular vehicle and I was confused by that but yeah those leak modules do act as a lab module you can use them to research and boost your science unfortunately this particular vehicle doesn't have any science on it to research or boost so uh, it'll have to wait I do have an idea to get some science to it next episode uh, but like I said, that's going to have to be next episode. And speaking of lab modules, that unfortunate explosion of that lab module that was a little bit earlier in this video, and I'm a little bit, uh, little bit bummed about that, but at least that contract was fulfilled. And right now I am really closing in on the upgrade of the Research and Development Center, and that whole lab module apparatus that was going up to the space station was very expensive, so I didn't put it into the building queue for now but i do plan on sticking it back into the building queue so you will see it again in the future i do want to get a lab module on my station but anyway here comes the last of my light bulb moments you see this is actually a different play session than what you just saw after that arrow breaking maneuver i ended that playstation station station session <laughs> And as I was lying in bed, I had my, my little eureka moment um, and realized what the issue is. See, here I'm setting up uh, an arrow breaking burn the way I have been in the past. And I'm setting my max G's, as you can see here, at 0.12 of a G. Okay, now I'm coming back out here and let's retract our radiators. Ah, a little experiment. We'll retract... We will retract these really large radiators and see what that does. And coming back out here, oh, now my max G's is 0.05. In other words, I'm doing hardly any braking at all. And take a look at that trajectory. It's not coming down much further from my current orbit. That's what's happening. Um, trajectory is, is, of course, doing some calculations to figure out how much aerodynamic resistance is is going to be experienced as we go through the atmosphere. And the a big factor of that is in fact the biggest factor of that is the cross-sectional area of your vessel through the airstream and with these giant radiators they have a lot of area on them so it was considering that area 
like these great big giant brakes <laughs> and then I would retract them and those great big giant air brakes were gone and of course I wasn't getting that much deceleration out of the out of the uh, aero braking maneuver so that was the whole issue so for you in the future if you're planning your aero braking maneuvers and you're using trajectories mod retract things like that take up large areas I suppose solar panels you might want to retract those as well though to be honest I think those radiators at the bigger area that that's where I'm starting to notice this then use trajectories to plan your aero braking because you're not going to have that stuff deployed as you go through the airstream so with all that worked out I would say I'm finally able to do some decent aero braking and here you see me doing uh, the last of them my sixth one though it should never have taken this long but uh, and then after that I got my apoapsis down low enough that I could think about starting to do the rendezvous with the station now last episode I did a couple of what I thought rendezvous that worked really well and that got me thinking about better ways to do this one so back once I got back out to my apoapsis what I did is I pushed my periapsis out to the or uh, the altitude of the orbit that the space station it is, is in which I know is about hundred and twenty kilometers Ooh, I'm already getting some close encounters there not quite close enough normally I'd want to do a burn here at periapsis let's see if I can use a little RCS to try and push those closer okay that, oh now I'm pushing them apart again yeah, no, no, it's not going to work. Okay, so I'm going to have to set up a burn at periapsis. So I set up a burn at periapsis that will adjust my orbit so that uh, the period of my orbit so that when I come around once more again, I will uh, encounter the station back at periapsis. And this actually works out relatively efficiently because you're doing all your burns at periapsis, which means that... They are at the most efficient place, you know, thanks to the Oberth effect, when you're at your lowest altitude, that's when prograde retrograde burns are the most effective. And because I was already coming pretty close to the station, you can stay, see the station there just barely lagging behind me. Um, I need my orbital period to just be a smidge more than that of uh of Kerbin station so i ended up bringing down my apoapsis all the way down to well right here it's getting down to 129 kilometers uh so it's almost the same as that of Kerbin station which is in an altitude of 120 kilometers let's see if i can just get these a little bit closer okay just about there all right let's close that what do we got here Ooh, 0.3 kilometers yep i can easily live with that so all we have to do is ride this around and perform our rendezvous went which went completely normally except for the fact i thought i don't know i make the docking look a little bit more exciting so i put the camera on this locked view uh coming in here and unfortunately i kind of have a little bit of trouble seeing what i'm doing all right we're getting pretty close now Okay, wait, I'm not going down. I seem to have stopped. Whoa. Okay, wait a second, wait a second, then. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, obviously, I did not have the docking port as my control point. I must have had that forward leak module as my control point. So let's uh, back up here and try this again. Unfortunately, other uh, besides just scraping the paint, which I obviously did, uh, this actually started the station into a bit of a tumble, um, which initially I thought, oh, cool, let's dock with a tumbling space station. This will be fun. And I quickly realized this was a lot less fun than I thought it was going to be. Eventually, I just got frustrated with all of this. Um, and, uh, went back to the station, used the time warp trick. That's when you just quickly time warp and then stop again. And that just stops all rotation. And then I was able to dock normally. I just wanted to get this over with. Uh, anyway, we do have a lot to do still with the Korion, but, uh, job number one is to finish off these two rescue contracts. So I had to get Shalcal and Krisnik back down to the surface and, uh, 
I hope these two kind of realize what a historic moment this is. This is going to be the last flight of the curse stock. For quite a long period of time in this particular campaign, the Curse Stock 5 was the my go-to vehicle when it came to getting my Kerbals in and out of low carbon orbit. And this particular Curse Stock has been sitting on the station for quite some time. It's time to retire it. So this is the last flight of the Curse Stock. And thankfully everything went perfectly fine despite the age of the vehicle. Got the two down to the surface and ended collected in my reward for finishing off these two contracts. And if you take a look at my current funds, you will see that I am just under 2.4 million curb bucks. In order to uh, upgrade the Research and Development Center, I need just over 2.5 million curb bucks. So I am closing in. Maybe the next two contracts I pick up that free up because of these two uh, being completed will uh, put me over the top. But I think that's going to have to be for the next episode. I thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.